United USA 2020. Check this out. So for those of you that are new to my channel, I've been documenting this for many, many years in Phoenix, Arizona. I can show you so many videos. Here's just a couple quick pictures, but I want to get right to it and get right to the video. Please like, share, get this out there. This is very important. Some serious stuff going on here. I need y'all to pay attention, and I really need y'all to like and share this video. All right? Trust me, when you see this, you'll understand why this is so important. And now is the time for us all to start speaking up about this issue. White, black red, purple, it don't matter whether you're on the left or the right, Republican, Democrat, Independent, Liberal, it don't matter. This is where everyone with one voice, not just Americans, but worldwide, all of us need to speak up about this United Nations climate change agenda. Uh, it's that serious now. So let's roll tape. Have canisters into the atmosphere filled with chemicals. 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 Another example is the array of technologies often referred to collectively as geoengineering. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI. A method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. As promising as it may be, moving forward on SAI would also raise a number of challenges for our government and for the international community and other geoengineering initiatives. We shall propose further cooperative efforts between all the nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. Weather control. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal. They're not natural. There's something going on. I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. It's got to be some outside influence doing that. I'm here to give you testimony that chemtrails, they're not contrails, are indeed real. They're spraying almost every day. I watch the clouds and watch the spraying program going on. I want to tell you that we're in very great danger from the pollution that's coming down over us. And we've been led astray by the military-industrial complex, and they're responsible for the cloud creation and weather manipulation programs. They're dark operations. When you look up at the sun and you see a white haze, that is aluminum floating in the air right now, and it's coming from the aircraft. You want some figures? Okay, latest water test. Tested the rain. 13,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum in the rain in 2013. Normally, it should be zero. Share what you hear today. Now, Kristen, can you tell us what branch of the military you were in and what you uncovered? Sure. Um, I wa was in the Air Force on active duty for nine years, and I worked in bioenvironmental engineering. Uh, one part of that process was to approve chemicals, hazardous materials. You know, what are you using? Why do you need it? Where's it being used? And tracking that disposal. Yeah. Um, after it being brought to my attention about chemtrails or geoengineering, I, I used to think it was crazy. It actually was disrespectful to my line of work because here we are trying to prevent environmental aspects and impacts um, and not have anybody get sick from our operations. But in, in an attempt to debunk, I, it changed my life. I started noticing things. I started noticing large quantities on the system where I would approve chemicals that did not have a manufacturer name, wasn't tied to a building. When I started asking questions, um, I slowly became demonized. Um, a couple years passed after that when I asked again and people realized I was kind of being more vocal about it on social media, I was starting to be thrown into a mental institution and have my daughter taken away. Wow. That changed my life. I no longer view the military the same way and I feel like after nine years of trying to uphold an oath, I'm able to do that now. I feel they're getting ready to admit it and they're trying to sell it to us. You know, yeah. It's kind of like they sell that to us, they sell fluoride to us. You know, Fluoride is a, is a mining waste product. Well, how can we make that good? You know, put it in your water. So I think that they're trying to now kind of admit it and act like they're going to start doing it. This steam amount has 61,000 micrograms per liter, four times the amount that is found in the soil up there. Where in the hell is this stuff coming from? But NASA is a corporation. I want you to know that. Uh, NASA has also uh, conducted a research program in what they call metallized fuels. We're actually putting aluminum oxide right in the fuel because it has two atoms of aluminum and three atoms of oxygen. So during the combustion process, it releases all that oxygen and dramatically increases efficiency, but it leaves the aluminum in the air. Alex Dimitrik explains what we could see. Hi, my name is Rich Moore. I'm a scientist at NASA's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia in the United States. 
What is your specific job here on this mission? So I'm an airborne atmospheric scientist, and I'm interested in understanding how aerosols or particles that are emitted by jet engines in the atmosphere go on to um, evolve in the atmosphere. The people who sit here, the, the left seat is the mission director, okay. and the right seat is the, his assistant. And what they're doing is they're monitoring the power that's drawn by all of the different racks. And so they have full control over all of the different experiments, which is really important for, for a NASA flying laboratory. Yeah, we're, we're trying to keep this thing as, as full as possible. Yeah. And there's a lot of trade-offs. Uh, we want to minimize, I talked about the sticky gases. Um, we, we worry about particles being lost to the walls of the tube as well. We try to keep the tubing lengths as short as possible for the samples we're making. And so we have a number of different probes, each targeting a different size range. So some particle, some probes may target, say, one micron to uh, 50 microns, and other ones may target larger particles. So mic a micron is 10 to the negative 6. Uh, so we're talking about a 1,000 times bigger than those soot particles that I described. And so it's a big plane. Uh, we've got instruments mounted on the fuselage, and then we also have instruments mounted on the wingtips. Starting in 1993, it was called in vitro toxicity of aluminum nanoparticles in rat alveolar macrophages. That's a real fancy way of saying testing the effect of aluminum nanoparticles on the white blood cells in the little air sacs in your lung, the alveoli. And what they found in this eight-year study was that these particles, when you're exposed to them long enough, it suppresses the ability of your white blood cells to defend you from airborne infections coming into your lungs. So it suppresses your immune system. But they also found that these same particles, once they get into your system, they can actually go through the barrier in each one of the cells. They get inside the cells, and these particles can actually suppress the ability of mitochondria, which are in the cells that help to gobble up toxins and things that would be harmful to the nucleus and the, the reproduction process of the cells in your body. These processes are suppressed, and so essentially by breathing this material in, your immune system is dramatically suppressed. They say, we're going to control the weather by the year 2025. I asked them, what are they doing spraying this, these chemicals on the public? I said, there's violation of United States Code 50 U.S.C. 1520, which prohibits the American government from experimenting on the U.S. citizens with chemical agents. I said, that law also requires the, who's ever experimenting when the federal government does it, that they have to report to Congress within 30 days. They wrote back, they said, they don't know what I'm talking about. I think we have enough evidence that there's this spraying going all over. by both Eisenhower and Kennedy. They're gaining traction on us, folks. We're, we are in trouble more than just a spraying program. All I can say is it's about time we get up in arms about this because it is affecting our health. It's high time that we as citizens of this great country take action. Man. Um, wow. Okay, so... <laughs> A lot of people starting to speak up now, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people starting to speak up. Now, if you're new to my channel, you'll see that I am a patriot for America, but I'm, I'm also uh, an outspoken um, truther for all issues. It doesn't matter what country you're from, what's happening in the world, whether it's world government, federal government, state and local. Um, Anything that is being suppressed and information that I believe that is affecting us, uh, whether it's circumstantially or whether it be our health, um, no matter what, no, because they haven't released that information. Now they're talking about it. Bill Gates wants to dim the sun to create global cooling, and they're talking about it like it's a new initiative when they've been doing this for over 20 years. Uh, I've been documenting it uh, on and off for the last 20 years, and like I said, I've made hundreds of videos about it. In the last couple of years on this new YouTube channel, United USA 2020, I've literally probably posted more than 50 videos about it just in the last couple of years, probably more than that. Um, I, I welcome all of you that are new to my channel. Please, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do. Um, I welcome you to my channel, I welcome you to the platform, and I welcome you to this conversation. Uh, please like and share, get it out there. And I'll see y'all soon.